I'd like to welcome now to A Little Knowledge is a Dangerous Thing, Dr. Kevin Savet. And uh, Kevin is the assistant professor and assistant professor at the University of Florida. And he also has his own consultancy that he is the president of called the Policy Solutions Lab. And I welcome you to the show, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. This is really an important topic for us because we have a ballot question on November 6th to legalize medical marijuana. And I always put uh, air quotes around medical. And that's kind of the first question that I have is what is the difference between medical marijuana and just marijuana that people are able to buy out on the streets? It's actually the same marijuana. There's no, different, there's no difference here. And the reason I think that so many people are concerned about this initiative is you know, not because we don't have compassion. I think all of us want people who are sick and dying to receive the best medical care and be in the most comfort, especially those with terminal illnesses. But what question three does specifically is set up an entire system of marijuana stores, storefront around the Commonwealth. And it allows anybody of any age to get marijuana for virtually any reason. They do not have to have a terminal illness. So there are so many loopholes in this that you really can put the medical in quotes. So prescriptions for marijuana, is that what we're talking about? It's actually a recommendation. They can't, no one can technically prescribe an illegal substance. So it's a doctor would be recommending that anybody for any reason that the doctor sees fit should get marijuana. And so they, then they take that recommendation to a health department sponsored storefront that can be owned and operated by anybody as long as you're an adult and, and don't have a drug felony conviction. Other than that, if you have another felony or, or, or another kind of conviction, you, that's actually okay. You can operate these stores. And there would be 35 in the first year, and there would be more after that. So, like I said, it, it's definitely very concerning. Uh, well, why is it a bad thing? Well, the issue is, I mean, medical marijuana, we don't smoke medicine. And the thing is, marijuana does have medicinal value, science has shown, but that's the individual components in the marijuana plant. So what I like to say is, we don't smoke opium or inject heroin to get the positive effects that morphine can bring us. And for the same reason, we should not smoke marijuana with its hundreds of chemicals we don't even know about, 90% of them, by the way. Why would we smoke an entire plant to receive the benefits that one or two constituents may bring? And actually, there are, there's already a marijuana-based pill, which is one component in marijuana, THC, that's in a pill that, that doctors can legally prescribe today, and they've been able to do so for a number of years. So that's why this really doesn't make sense. And you know, there's a reason why the Massachusetts Medical Society is against question three. Um, as doctors and scientists and physicians, they realize that marijuana in, in its smoked form and its raw form is not medicine. So we have to wonder why the only people pushing for this are the advocates who want to legalize marijuana. Well, when you talk about those advocates, uh, you have to look at the situations, say, out in California or Colorado, where this this uh, bill essentially has been passed and what the results are. So who is actually getting these recommendations? That's exactly right. We've seen this movie before in California and Colorado, like you're saying. And so it really what we know from the studies we, we've learned now over the last 15 years of having medical marijuana there, what we know from the studies is that the average user of quote unquote medical marijuana is a 32 year old white male with a history of drug and alcohol abuse and no history of chronic illness or terminal illness. So it's not Antilly with terminal cancer that's getting marijuana. It's your neighbor or you know the 32 year old white male who would be getting it anyway and now goes to the dispensary to get it. The problem in these states and the reason actually they're rolling back in California, for example, is that even people who voted for this, this is not what they voted for. They're, these are parents taking their kids to school, walking their kids to preschool or kindergarten and they see, um, they walk by a medical marijuana dispensary where smoke is coming out and it's disturbing quality of life there in many of these cities in California, and that's why they're pushing back pretty hard. I think I read that L.A. was pushing back very hard, in fact, uh, with a local ordinance that uh, is limiting the number of these distribution points. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about is um, the reason that people are going to ask voters to approve this petition is because it's compassionate. It's for the people that have chronic 
and incurable diseases, glaucoma, and there's just no other way, including Marinol, which I think is one of the drugs that has THC in it that, you, that doctors can prescribe, um, that that just doesn't work. Is that, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, the issue is m most doctors for, for terminal illnesses like cancer or others, doctors don't prescribe, I mean, marijuana-based medications isn't even where doctors go in the first place. So for the vast majority of people, there are non-marijuana-based meds that, that actually work well. Uh, for the small minority where, that it doesn't work well, a drug like Marinol is an example. It's a pill, a THC pill. And like I said, I think in the future there will be other marijuana-based medications available. Uh, in fact, there's one already in the U.S. that's about to be approved. It's called Sativex. That's S-A-T-I-V-E-X. And it's essentially an oral mouth spray of two ingredients in marijuana. Um, THC, which is what Marinol is, what you talked about, and another ingredient called CBD, and CBD stands for cannabidiol. Scientists have shown that CBD can actually have antipsychotic effects and actually helps with certain things like, like neuropathic pain, but it doesn't get you high. So the marijuana today on the street does not have CBD even in it at all. The, the, the producers have bred it out because the last thing they want in their marijuana is an ingredient like CBD, which actually doesn't make you high. It counters the THC. Um, but what we've seen in this mouth spray is it can be very effective. It's been actually approved in 20 countries already, including Canada and most of Europe. And we're going to be seeing it in the U.S. very soon. In fact, people can enroll in studies today and receive Sativex. So, uh, you know, again, why would we want people to smoke a raw crude plant that has absolutely no controls? And we really have to ask ourselves a question. Do we vote on medicine? I mean, is that how we determine what medicine is with popular vote and with a million dollars in out-of-state funding, which is what this question has brought? I, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. I think we need to stick to the scientific process and, and, and use data to make our decisions about what medicine is, not popular opinion. I look forward to more information on this in our next segment. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Representative.